for humanity. Wait, the patient ones always win. Victory is with those who never let go of me. When calamity strikes, it's another test in our lives. So take one day at a time, but never give up, no giving, even when success seems out of sight. The patient ones turn to him. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته If we take a look at South East Asia Malaysia, Indonesia, parts of the Philippines, parts of Thailand and elsewhere if we look at China, if we looked at Europe and the Americas, we find that there are a big chunk, a big portion of Muslims in these areas. And we know for sure that no army, no Muslim army had set foot in these countries. So. How can we justify more than half a billion, half a billion Muslim accepting Islam, practicing it, and working hard to spread the word of Allah, the Almighty? The answer is very simple. It is the akhlaq of the Muslim. It is the moral conduct, the ethics, the good attitude and manner that Muslims displayed when they visited these countries, either for trade or to study. When they went to these countries, people were impressed by their truthfulness, by their being trustworthy, by lots of the beautiful characteristics that Islam promotes in its followers. And that is what made people accept Islam as a religion and as a way of life. Therefore, as Muslims, we have to work hard on these characteristics that Islam promotes. And in so many cases, a lot of the Muslims work hard, but only to fix their exterior appearance, to fix their bodies, and fine-tune them. We see them spend time in gyms trying to work out, trying to stay healthy and fit, which is a good thing. But what's more important is that you work on your ethics and your moral conduct, to work on your akhlaq. It was reported in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet said that Allah does not look at your shapes and your wealth. He doesn't look whether you're tall or short, fat or thin, black or white. And he doesn't look at your bank accounts, but he looks at your hearts and he looks at your deeds. So Allah Azza wa Jal looks at our hearts to see whether they're purified or tarnished and stained with things that he does not like. And he looks at our deeds and how we treat people and how we treat others and how we perform different forms of worship. And this is what we as Muslims should focus and work on. That is why the Prophet والسلام, whenever he looked in a mirror, he would supplicate to Allah and say, Oh Allah, 
you have made my outward form, which is the body, the face, you've made my outward form beautiful. So make my attitude good as well. Make my inner form, my spirit, my ethics and moral conduct, make that beautiful as well. This is what the Prophet used to supplicate alayhi salatu wasalam. What do we supplicate nowadays when we look at the mirror? Oh Allah, make me more handsome. Oh Allah, make my hair straight. Or make me appeal to people more. Make me wealthier. Make me smarter. Make me a person with higher degrees so that I would impress people. These are the type of supplications we ask Allah Azza wa Jal. But this is not the Sunnah. This is not what the Prophet والسلام, used to do. You have to work hard for this. This does not come by chance. You do not sit in your house without any action from your side and say, Oh Allah, grant me a child of my offspring to be a strong, healthy boy. And you're asking Allah without getting married. You're asking Allah without doing the means that he instructed us to do in order to attain and to get this objective we're seeking. Anyone who does this, he would be considered insane. And when the Prophet ﷺ is supplicating to Allah to beautify his inward form, to beautify his spirit with good conduct and with beautiful manners, he was working hard on this wasallam. So we have to supplicate to Allah, but at the same time, we have to work hard on substituting the cowardice in us with bravery. Substituting being stingy in misery with being generous. Substituting this hatred and enmity in our hearts with pardoning others and forgiving them. These characteristics are part of the akhlaq that Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to be. And this form of adab, this form of good conduct, moral conduct and good manners. It is not only treating others as so many people think and believe. It also has to do in treating Allah the Almighty and treating his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, treating your parents and after that treating the rest of humanity. So the best and the first thing for you to have the good manners and the moral conduct with is Allah the Almighty. And how is that? Well, it is simple. First of all, you have to be bashful from Allah's sight, hearing, and from Allah's generosity to you. You have to be bashful in the sense that you do not commit sin and you do not abandon mandatory and obligatory acts which Allah Azza wa Jal has instructed you and ordered you to do. Why is that? Well, because you know that He is all seeing and that He is all hearing and nothing skips His sight or hearing the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. He hears and sees the footsteps of an ant on a stone in the middle of the night. And he hears that, and this does not confuse him, Azza wa Jal, with all the billions of people asking him, supplicating to him in different languages, on different occasions, nothing mixes up at the side of Allah Azza wa Jal. He hears all, he knows all, and he answers all the Almighty. So, it's part of your good manners and moral conduct that you treat Allah Azza wa Jal with due respect in the sense that you are bashful 
from him so that you do not do things that he does not want you to do. This is part of the moral conduct with Allah, the Almighty. Part of it as well is to be accepting his decree. So whatever Allah Azza wa Jal decrees upon you, you accept this. You tolerate it and you are satisfied by it because it is the choosing of Allah, the Almighty, for you. You do not object, you do not reject, and you do not complain. This is part of accepting Allah's decree and your destiny, which Allah Azza wa Jal has put for you. We have a short break, so stay tuned, and inshallah we will be right back. The patient ones always weep. A man, a mission, a world-renowned orator on Islam and comparative religion. He dedicated more than five decades of his life for Dawa. Ahmad Didad. We Muslims believe that Jesus was the Christ. This book is an eternal book of guidance for you and for me, for the whole of mankind. It's a solution to the problems of mankind. The miracle is when you expect a man to be dead and he's alive. That's a miracle. Man with a Mission. Every Sunday to Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 7.30 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. Islam prohibits killing of innocent human beings. Every day, innocent human beings are being killed in different parts of the world. Most religions condemn the killing of innocent human beings. But Islam goes a step further and says in the glorious Quran, Surah Al-Maidah, chapter number 5. Verse number 32, if anyone kills a human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it would be as if he has killed the whole of humankind. It does not stop here, but continues. And if anyone saved a single human life, it would be as if he has saved the life of the entire humankind. Remember, Please do not kill a single innocent human being, but rather save the whole of humankind by saving human lives. Human life is precious. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. It is easier to practice Islam with a better understanding. A systematic and simplified approach would eliminate confusion. So join me as I discuss the practical yet simple steps to understand Islam. Join Hatham Al Haddad in Principles of Understanding Islam next on Peace TV. The patient ones always we. Welcome back. I've heard once an old man whom I visited and he was quite ill. And I was comforting him and I was telling him that inshallah Allah will erase a lot of your sins because of your illness and because of the calamity you're going through. And this was the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, to go and comfort people when they're ill, to visit them and try to give them the glad tidings of Allah's forgiveness. This old man used to pray in the masjid, the five daily prayers. And he looked like a good practicing Muslim. But I was shocked to hear him say that, Alhamdulillah, on the calamities that are being inflicted upon me the only thing that 
makes me wonder is that I've been praying for him for more than 45 years now, regularly in the masjid, while my neighbor, whom I had never ever seen in the masjid pray with us, is fit and healthy. But this is his decree. Now the man did not complain clearly, but this what anyone could understand from what he was saying. He's complaining that I've been praying for 45 years in all these illnesses and all these calamities I'm suffering from, while my neighbor was never struck by any of such calamities, yet he never prayed in the masjid. This is bad conduct. This is bad manners with Allah Azza wa Jal and it could easily nullify a person's Islam. By objecting on Allah's decree, this could be one of the things that voids your Islam, that could nullify Islam altogether. You have to realize that part of the six pillars of Iman, of faith, is to believe in Allah's decree of Allah's divine decree. So whatever happens to you, you have to believe that it is Allah's doing and that you have to do your best to get out of this calamity, to get cure for your illness. But through the process, you acknowledge that it is from Allah. It's either because of my sins or because Allah Azza wa Jal is testing me to see how I perform. But to object, to reject, and to complain, this is a clear sign that this is not a real believer. Part of being polite and part of having good conduct and moral conduct with Allah Azza wa Jal is not to offer any vows. And a lot of people make nether, but they do not make it out of goodwill. They make it as a form of exchange. It's a deal. So if my kid, if my child falls sick and I'm so afraid for its safety, I would go and make a vow and say, oh Allah, if you cure my child, I'll slaughter a sheep and give it to the poor. This is a transaction. So the Prophet ﷺ forbade us from making such transactions. And he told us, he justified this by saying that a vow is something that Allah extracts money from a miserly person. Because had it not been for your sick child, you would not have offered this vow. So it is not recommended, it is makruh to make such a vow. But once a person is committed to it, once a person commits himself to it and he says it, then he has to fulfill it. And that is why Allah praised those who fulfill their vows once they were made. Of course, a person could vow something without an exchange. If he vows that he prays witr every single night. So this is not forbidden. This is part of the vows that are permissible. Among the things that are considered to be good manners and moral conduct with Allah Azza wa Jal, not to be haste in answering your supplications. People supplicate. People have to supplicate because they have no Lord but Him, the Almighty Allah, and they cannot turn to anyone except him. So they supplicate. But the majority of them, they do not have good manners with Allah. And this is where akhlaq comes. We have to have this adab, this proper conduct with Allah Azza wa Jal. Lots of them, the people supplicate to Allah for a month, a year, maybe more. And then they complain and say, I've supplicated for him for so long and he did not answer my supplications. 
and they would then stop supplicating and abandon calling and praying to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is a sign of the worst conduct ever with Allah Azza wa Jal to treat Allah as if He is our servant instead of us being His servant, the Almighty Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. We supplicate, we humiliate ourselves to Him. And if He wishes, He answers our prayers. If He doesn't, this is due to our own shortcomings. We have to continue, we have to insist, we have to keep on asking Him Azza wa Jal so that He would answer our calls. But to stay away, to refrain and abstain from calling Him because I called and He didn't answer my call, this is bad manners with Allah the Almighty. Among the things that people also do, which are considered to be bad conduct and bad manners, is raising the voice when supplicating to Allah. We see a lot of the Muslims do this when they make dua. They shout, and this is bad manners. Allah Azza wa Jal is not deaf. Allah the Almighty is not far. And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu once heard his companions do this and he said, take it easy on yourselves. Allah is neither deaf nor far. He is close to you and he's all hearing and he answers your calls. Now compare this to what we see in Haram where people do the tawaf and the sa'i and they are shouting their throats off supplicating to Allah Azza wa Jal Inna alhamda and they shout so loud to the extent that those doing the tawaf or doing the sa'i are alarmed by it are irritated by their loud voices and they're disturbing the worshippers and this is not permissible for them to do you hear them in taraweeh when the Imam is supplicating for the dua of al qunut in Witr. And unfortunately, some Imams, they themselves shout while weeping or without weeping and crying. They shout, Oh Allah, forgive us. And what are you doing? He said, well, I was, you know, carried away. No, you should not. If you're supplicating to Allah, you should lower your voice. You should humiliate yourself. But shouting as if you're shouting at someone you know or a friend of yours, this is completely forbidden. And it is not accepted and it's not tolerated either. Among the worst bad behavior and conduct with Allah Azza wa Jal is when a person rejects Allah's decrees by his women desire. So he hears the verse of the Quran, he learns the hadith of the Prophet says, no, this is not logical. I do not apply it. And unfortunately, we've seen some of these da'is now who have become famous and they start brushing off a lot of things from the Quran and from the Sunnah, claiming that this is easier for people to accept as if Allah is instructing them to make things easy for people instead of following the Quran and the Sunnah. This is wrong. Applying your logic in the Quran and Sunnah and rejecting the Quran and Sunnah because it is illogical to you is blasphemy. It's exactly what Shaitan did. Iblis, Satan, when Allah instructed him to prostrate to Adam, he said, no, I will not. Why? He said, it's illogical. I was created from fire and he was created from clay and fire is far superior to clay and that is why he was doomed in hell forever. It is part of the good conduct and good manners to be polite with the Prophet and that is by not calling our Prophet by name in lots of the literature in Arabic and probably in English, we would find someone writing and he says, and Muhammad ibn Abdullah migrated from Mecca to Medina. And when Muhammad 
came to Medina, they did this and that to him. This is wrong and impolite. You have to address the Prophet وسلم, with either the Prophet or the Messenger. And you have to offer salutation to him by saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace and praise of Allah be upon him. Peace and praise. As salatu was salam. Also, part of good manners and moral conduct with the Prophet is that you refuse that he is insulted in front of you or mentioned or degraded in front of you or that his sunnah is being mocked or ridiculed in front of you. This is part of being polite with the Prophet and also part of it is to follow every single step of his sunnah whether it's big or small to adhere and follow it implement it to yourself this is part of the good and moral conduct that we all should have of course among all we have to have good etiquettes good manners and moral conduct with our parents by respecting them by loving them by humiliating ourselves to them and by obeying them in things that do not conflict with Allah's instructions and commands to us. We have to go out of our ways to please them and to satisfy them. And after that, the sky is the limit. We have to have good conduct, good manners, beautiful etiquettes with the people in general and specifically with Muslims as this is part of our belief. This is all the time we have for today's program. Until we meet next time, fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The patient ones always win. Victory is with those who never let go of me. When calamity strikes, it's another test in our lives. So take one day at a time, but never give up, no give in, even when success seems out of sight. The patient one.